Hi, I'm here with Julia Jantz, who is the director of My Father the Mover. Julia is a South African filmmaker who is living in New York. Welcome, Julia. Welcome to Shortcuts. Thank you, Nancy. I understand you like to make films that look into the human condition. And you found this group um, in a township in South Africa. And I'm really curious how you found them. Yes. Um, by default, really, you know, I had no intention of making this film. Um, I was due to make a music video and was looking for a dancer and was introduced to Stone by an associate producer um, who I work with called Mandy Lakayengo. And I sat down just casually talking to Stone and I said, well, how long have you been a dancer for? And he laughed and he said, no, you know, I'm not a dancer, I'm a mover. So I was immediately intrigued because he was in that moment, you know, recategorizing and, 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 and calling out something different and something bigger than being a dancer. And so when I asked him what he meant by what it is to be a mover, he told me he calls himself a mover because he actually works with a, a group of kids in his community um, who have little prospects. He, he comes from a very poor part of Cape Town, Kailiche, it's a township. Um, and he works with kids who've been privy to not only poverty, but also drugs, gangsterism, abuse. And he says that through gum movements, gum is a specific kind of African dance, um, he can help these kids transcend, um, you know, a state of feeling they'll never be anything more than what their current circumstances predict to, in Stone's words, finding their superpowers. And it was right there and then where I thought, well, I don't want to do the music video. Um, this is so much more interesting. And as a person who, like you say, is always looking for stories specifically around the human condition um, and the human condition's ability to transcend, um, you know, I thought, here's the great story. And it, and it became a story of freedom. Interesting. What were the kids like to work with? I love working with kids because they are unfiltered. You know, they don't they don't um, watch what they say. They don't, you know, they they just are who they are. And there's a there's a flow there, and there's an authenticity and a realness. Um, and specifically, this group of kids, because if you were to go into their community, into their you know where they reside. Um, you know, despite what you see and, and, and it's, and you know, the, 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 the townships can be hard and they can be tough, but these kids are so full of hope and so full of light and so full of sunshine. And, um, you know, I, I was so inspired by them and so inspired working with them. So it was wonderful. Do you attribute that to the dance, their hope and their light? Yeah. I mean, look, I think, um, I do think what Stone is doing is pretty miraculous. Um, I, I, you know, attending his class, yes, it's one thing to dance to go movements, but his teachings are all about, you know, the, the, the psychological, the spiritual. And I do think that, you know, that those teachings do help these kids and, and just having a community that is focused on other than drugs and stuff other than gangsterism. Um, I do think that Stone and community leaders like himself on, on that grassroots level do move mountains, yes. Why was it so important to him for his daughter to start to dance? I mean, you know, the filmmaking process is so interesting because I, I met Stone and decided this would be a, a, a documentary about Stone and had no intention of um, telling his daughter's story. I mean, at the end of Post, it became my father, the mover. She, she, it's, it's her story, um, as the title suggests. It's through her lens and through eye, her eyes. And I showed up on set and there was his daughter and we were all ready to shoot Stone. But my first question was, you know, who's this? And he said, no, this is, this is a letter. This is my daughter. And I said, oh, is she, does she dance as well? No, 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 she didn't dance. And there for me was immediately the story because I could tell this more global story about his work, um, but through a very intimate father-daughter relationship because I thought it was strange that 
you know, he's the community dance teacher and, you know, the daughter comes from a hard home because he's a single father raise, raising her. Um, and yet she doesn't dance and she doesn't benefit from his teaching. So the, 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 the protagonist's journey was to get his daughter to dance essentially. And, 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 and he does do that. And, and what transpired was beautiful and miraculous. It was a beautiful moment. It's a beautiful film. Um, unfortunately, we're, we don't have much time left, but I do want to ask you, the, the film was picked up by MTV um, and Sheila Evans, who is one of your producers. So what does that mean for the film in the future and for you as a filmmaker? I mean, it was quite incredible. You know, we we got selected to be in Tribeca. Next thing we'd won Tribeca, it all happened very fast. Next thing, you know, there was this flood of uh, acquisition requests in my inbox. And um, I, I went with Sheila in the end because not only was she a judge on the panel, she'd seen the film earlier on. She saw what it meant. and. From all the executives who I spoke with, Sheila had connected to the film, to the heart of the film. That that was so clear to me. Um, she had felt what I was intending to communicate in her heart. And so I knew she'd be the perfect person to champion the film. Of course, she's also Sheila Nevins, and you know, she's she's the Anna Wintour of the documentary filmmaking space. Um, they did wonders for the film, you know, they had all the right people behind it. It's still traveling as we can see today. And this was back in, you know, the beginning when COVID hit 2020. And um, I've just been so happy that Sheila and MTV have been behind it because it means that Stone's exposure has, you know, gotten so much weight. And I think that's because of the acquisition. So it's, it's been great all around. And also thanks to your film. Uh, Julia, it's a pleasure. Thanks so much for joining us tonight.